Well, with me now is Angela Rayner, Labour's Shadow Education Secretary, and Sir Vince Cable, recently re-elected as Liberal Democrat MP and standing in his party's leadership election. Sir Vince was Business Secretary for the five-year term of the Coalition Government. But first, let's talk to Ken Clark, who served for 24 years in the governments of Heath, Thatcher, Major and Cameron. And uh, I'm guessing uh, May is going to be by far the shortest lived. Well, she's in a different position to any of the ones you've named. Uh, I wasn't around where Baldwin got himself into the same position in the early 1920s. He called an election, didn't win it, and produced a hung parliament. And uh, I hope we cope rather better than the politicians of the 1920s did on a more cross-party basis. Is she a dead parliament. woman walking? No, she's not, because there's no obvious contender. And if anybody does start going on manoeuvres, uh, it will cause, I think, a lot of anger inside the party. The fact is, there's no obvious leadership contender. And if the Conservative Party can't think of any better to do than decide as it hasn't got any clear policy line at the moment, it's going to settle down to have a leadership contest, I, I, I think the reaction of the electorate will be very savage. The Chancellor's speech today must have been music to your ears. He's put jobs above immigration, and that's a big difference between him and Theresa May. It was a very good speech. I mean, uh, again, you will interpret it as a divisive comment. That is the move of the moment. No, I'm just saying... But I know, actually thought Philip spoke a lot of comments. He didn't mention the freedom didn't of movement. Anything I disagreed with. No, but, I mean, what the point is, I mean, freedom of movement has been the, the untouchable thing for Theresa May, and that's clearly not the case for Philip well, well, freedom of movement can no doubt be tightened up a bit because uh, the whole of uh, the continent is facing a migration crisis. We face it in common. It's not a different one. It's floods of people coming out of Africa and the Middle East always been a sovereign decision for us. It's not changed by the... Uh, uh, whether we're in the EU or not. So far as people coming here to work are concerned, I think we realise we can't close down great sectors of business and parts of the public services. We probably don't have to be quite so lax. We could have been tougher uh, under the rules before. But, but the, the key thing, the thing we're giving first priority to in a great list of problems is the economy, jobs, investment. And we mustn't put... Uh, any fresh barriers to trade and investment in the way. We want no new customs barriers, no new regulatory barriers and no tariffs. So you're saying stay in the single market and the customs union? Well, that appears for reasons I don't quite understand to be ruled out, but I think whatever you do, you've got to come up with a conclusion I've just arrived at, because we've already been made poorer. The Brexit vote... Uh, actually devalued the currency, because investors said, uh, oh, sterling assets no longer so attractive, the outlook for the British economy is very bad, uh, we junked our currency, and we can see the effects of inflation on households. It's not doing people any very great deal of good. The economy's slowed down. It's too soon to say we have a problem, but it, it, the warning is there. We've got to give a priority to trade and to jobs. So don't you think, from your point of view, that someone like Philip Hammond is precisely the man who could reach out to these people and do some sort of deal on Europe I've just that, said, is, that is cross-party. You know, it's, cross it's a celebrity culture of today. It's not I, you I or don't me. just mean... You're, 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 you're much prefer... I mean, his position... All, all this complicated stuff about the economics and politics, let's talk about I mean, people. his position... Philip, Philip said some very sensible things about the economy. He reminded us that although no politician of any party talked about the economy in the election, nobody mentioned deficits or anything so nasty, the fact is we still have a combination of of economic problems, which are the real background to what any chancellor in any government's going to have to deal with. And you can cope with that. But, meanwhile, the last thing we want is any more barriers to trade and investment. We're, we believe in free trade. Theresa May believes in free trade. What on earth are we putting barriers between ourselves and the biggest free market in the world Let, let me just turn to, to my right. I mean, Sir so, so Vince, you, you agree with everything he thinks yeah, on Europe, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. You, you would support... Embarrassingly for the Ken programme. We, 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 no, not embarrassing at all. No, no um, we do agree uh, that, that we mustn't... So in the Queen's speech tomorrow, we mustn't have legislation that will create barriers that take us out of the customs union and compromise the single market. I, I think it's clear Philip Hammond's in that camp and uh, we must make sure across parties that we don't do more damage than has been done already. Angela Rayner, could there be some sort of cross-party coalition on Brexit that softens it, that gives us much, something much more like Norway or Switzerland or something like that? Well, I was astonished by the Chancellor's speech today because he basically agreed with what Labour's position has been all along, and that's that we don't need a hard Brexit. And, and, that we, phrase, should, um, Brexit, and we should yeah. put jobs first and that we should put living standards first. So, absolutely. But, you know, we've got to have an end to austerity. Austerity policy hasn't worked, and unfortunately, the Chancellor didn't give us that commitment today, which we've seen the devastating effects of austerity policies on our public services. Tomorrow, we're going to see the Queen's speech. Yes, I, I don't think Angela's right. I mean, actually, as, as I understand Labour's position, you can clarify it, 
you are in favour of taking us out of the single market, you are in favour of taking out of the customs union. These are the fundamental well, it you building talking, blocks of the European project. No, yeah. we've been absolutely clear. We've said that, you know, Brexit does mean Brexit and that actually we want to see... <laughs> really? Seriously? We, we, we've that, said... Are you using that phrase? <laughs> we, we've, said, we've said that we respected the democratic will of the people and that actually what it's about now is about jobs and living standards and we want access, tariff-free access to the single market and obviously the customs union. So I don't think it's that far away, actually. We've not been so explicit about the vehicle in which you use rather than the destination. Right, let's get to the traveling. Queen's speech though because the problem with the Queen's speech tomorrow is that it's going to have very little in it and it's certainly going to have nothing in it really for the people most affected this week by the Grenfell Tower disaster and that whole class of people in social housing at the bottom of society is it? Well, I think it's so put, what are you going to do about it? I think it's put an absolute clear focus on that enough is enough, that this clear divide, the inequalities in Britain at the moment, and this austerity, which has actually been foisted upon the most poor in our society, has to end, you know, with these absolute lessons that have to be learnt by the Grenville Tower. I called on last August around the sprinklers in schools. They've deregulated, they've watered down regulations that... So Labour will you Party put down put amendments in. to we the will... Queen's speech to say sprinklers in every tower block... We will be absolutely clear we're putting down amendments in the Queen's speech. We've said that we need to end austerity, we need to have investment in public services, we need to build council housing, and we need to make sure that our council services have the resources they need. It's clear Would that the authority that? weren't able to do that. Yes, they have. That's the councils have got to be given the freedom to borrow to build. At the moment, it's a ridiculous situation. Local councils can borrow money from the Public Works Loan Board and invest in speculative commercial in investment the other side of the country. They've, they've got to get on to the job of building houses. That, that is the fundamental problem in London. So you Lack will support Labour amendments housing. tomorrow, will you? No, not necessarily. It depends how they're phrased, but we have an open-minded view about it. But the principle of getting more affordable housing and giving councils the power to do something about it, of course, we've got to get on with that. W will this government be able to reach out to these people at all? Do you think they should? Well... Theresa May is actually socially very liberal, so she's perfectly receptive to ideas of doing something to try to combine successful free market economics with a proper social conscience. The, the, the trouble is the, the Labour Party's only reaction is how many billions to spend on any problem. That's a substitute for a policy. Uh, and all the lobbies are out there in full force at the moment because they can see that the government is not a very big majority in power. But if and you they, go they, down they, to, but, to, but to that area... And considered policies, yes, she always wanted to pursue those. And but it's been talk, talk hasn't it? I mean, you know... It's, it's, it's been for very long. It's not been all talk uh, in many ways. So we've already acknowledged that we're going to need more social housing. That was acknowledged uh, before the election, which was quite a change from the previous coalition government in which Vincent It's not going to be in the Queen's speech, though, is it? I think, I think the commitment to go to, to start doing something to increase the amount of social housing has been made. I hope it's not withdrawn. But whether it needs legislation in the Queen's speech, I'm not sure. I don't well, think it necessarily it. does. But, 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 but the, 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 it's, you've got to get the right balance between these things. And the background is you've got to look after the economy, first of all. That's what's really going to well, enable Ken, you to do these things. One of the things. things that frustrates me is the debt has doubled. We've talked about we need to make sure that we've yes. got infrastructure, well, it, investment in infrastructure. When you do things on the cheap, this is what happens. And On this the is chief. the frustration, is that you're saying that Labour wants to spend, where we think you should spend and invest in an important way that protects citizens, that protects our jobs and enables businesses to prosper. But we haven't seen that under it, austerity. It, it, is the sad duty, it is the sad duty of chancellors in every government to say two plus two equals four. Your colleagues always say, in the exceptional and wholly temporary political circumstances at the moment, two plus two has got to equal five. If you think getting a debt of £90 billion pounds is on the cheap and you're therefore you could add a few tens of but billions more the yes. you've not, you've no, not so, so your lot is took it, us into 2008 yeah. and you mustn't take but, us so back isn't the trouble but people watch, back to the main just, just hold on things. a second Ken. i mean isn't the trouble that the people who have been affected by the grenfell tower disaster this week look at this discussion and go nothing's changed and something has to change Absolutely. in order to reach out to those people. Somebody has to study the fire regulations well, and well, what went wrong. You've that is well, the you're, 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 you're 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 very practical. You've you've indeed, there were, there, were attempts, there were attempts to water down the fire regulation. Absolutely. It was in the coalition and we stopped it, actually. The Labour Party but, but To go back well, you to your fundamental question about schools. public spending, of course, governments have got to be prudent. But there are some key areas. I mean, policing is one. Schools are another because of the new formula and the problem it's created. And those are the areas where the government's got to identify additional resources. They can't spend more money on everything, but there are some key priority areas. You can look at some of these things. And at the moment, if we are going to have to accept that uh, some easing of uh, 
austerity as it's called, uh, should be allowed, as both the major parties pledged everybody that uh, nobody was going to have to pay any more tax of any kind. Uh, you know, all kinds of dire things were put into the manifestos of both parties. Uh, a a chancellor is going to have to explain to people that, you know, some taxes go up sometimes, some go down sometimes, and if you're not careful, if you decide to give in to every lobby uh, and start handing out money, taxes would have to go up rather a lot. We're, we're, we're just in the last few seconds. But um, I think people have seen tax cuts to the rich at the same time as the poor getting poorer, <laughs> yeah. and you cut the regulations on fire election. rescue, we, and you yeah, also voted down our amendment on making sure that houses were fit for human yeah. habitation. People have seen that, yeah. and people can see through the austerity agenda. You, you say you're end. going to spend billions, but nobody's going to have to pay any more tax. I mean, it's, just, it's borrowing and printing. But we're refighting the election and we're refighting the follies of 2008. Yes. It is we, possible we must for leave a it central there, unfortunately. centrist government with some cross-party support to pursue sensible policies in the long-term national interest on the economy and on Brexit. We are, we are refighting together. the election campaign, and we might well be, I suppose, before too long. Thank you all very much indeed.